welcome back to my channel. I just thought I would pop in here at the beginning of this vlog just to do a kind of introduction before um, we get into it just because I didn't really get a chance to explain before I went to London which is what you're about to see me going and doing. So that's what this is now. Um, like I said I went to London for a couple of days. I went from the 26th of January until the 29th of January uh, because I wanted to go see a couple of shows that I've wanted to see for quite a while with specific people in them that were leaving soon but yeah I just wanted to go to London see some West End shows. I went with my mum, it was a lovely few days and I really enjoyed myself and I loved the shows that we went to see. You won't see me talking a lot in these vlog clips just because I didn't bring my camera which is what I'm using right now to film on. Um, I just used my phone and uh, my phone was being used as a navigation tool. Um, I have a really terrible sense of direction so I needed Google Maps to navigate a lot of the time around London uh, so I was using that. Um, I felt like you know that episode of Friends where they're in London and Joey has his big map um, and he has to like put the map on the ground and stand in it in order to be able to understand where he's going. I felt like Joey a lot of the time when I was navigating because I'd be like looking at my phone like I think it wants us to go this way I'm not entirely sure uh, so that's why I don't really talk because 90% of the time I was using my phone for Google Maps so that's what's going on in these clips that you see and yeah I did manage to film a couple of things in the theatre too not too much um I just wanted to sit and enjoy myself really so um obviously I didn't film the show I just want to preface that I didn't mean that by like oh I filmed the show I filmed the vows which is what you're allowed to film so yeah um I hope you enjoy I will pop in at the end now in a second to talk about my post show thoughts and feelings and emotions after seeing the shows that I go see so I will see you in a little bit after I've showed you some vlog clips so see you then We made it to London. I'm very excited to be here. And tonight is my wicked show. I'm so excited to see Sophie Evans. Finally, it's going to be before she leaves. So, yeah, I can't wait. <gasps> I hope you enjoyed those little vlog clips. Like I said, it wasn't too much, um, just because I was just more living in the moment, enjoying myself, vlogging tiny bits of clips here and there um, when I could around, you know, doing the little touristy things that we were doing and um, navigating. <laughs> so yeah, that was my little time in London. I really want to go again at some point soon this year to see other shows. Um, for now that was just a little mini getaway just to see a couple of shows which I will now talk about. So the first show that you will have seen us go and see was 
Wicked. So I wanted to go to Wicked specifically this time round to be able to see uh, Sophie Evans. I have seen Wicked once before, that was when it was on the tour, so I haven't actually seen it in the West End before, so that was pretty cool getting to go to the West End to see Wicked, because that's been there for the 15th anniversary this year, I believe, and uh, Sophie Evans obviously had rejoined the cast um, in the last couple of months to cover, maternity cover, for the Glinda that was there, who's now rejoined the cast, um, Helen Wolf. so that was pretty cool. I wanted to see Sophie though specifically because Back in the day, uh, I watched the show that she was on called Over the Rainbow, which was where Andrew Lloyd Webber was searching for a new Dorothy for his new production of The Wizard of Oz that he was going to be holding in the London Palladium. And she did really well, and she went into the final, she came down to the last two, and she ended up getting to be unstudy Dorothy for quite a while, and then she took over the role of Dorothy, which I ended up seeing, which was pretty cool. So I thought when she got announced as Glinda, way back in what was it 2016 or 17 and she joined the show that it would be pretty cool to get to see her as Glinda because obviously that's quite a full circle moment really getting to see her as Dorothy and then go and play the witch that's in The Wizard of Oz um, in Wicked so I didn't actually end up seeing her when she was in that version of the show and I was a bit like oh, I thought I'd never get to see her play Glinda and then when she was announced as the maternity cover I thought I need to go see that so when the show reopened I waited a couple months and then literally waited until the last minute like now that I've filmed this video um she's already left the show again and the person that she was covering the maternity for has returned to Wicked so I really squeezed it in there at the last second but uh I was really excited to finally get to see her I don't know she's just an amazing performer and I've always heard really good things about her Glinda so finally getting to see her Glinda and her flying down in that bubble was really exciting for me um obviously I haven't seen her perform live since she was Dorothy and I think she was 17, 18 when she was last in um, The Wizard of Oz so she's definitely grown a lot and her voice has got a lot stronger since then so getting to see her uh, and how much she's changed over the years and how much her voice has developed was pretty cool her vocals were incredible um, I didn't know that she could reach those notes because um, obviously sometimes Glinda's quite operatic of a sing so that was amazing getting to see her play that role and I just felt so giddy and excited and like really proud because she's Welsh and I'm also Welsh so getting to see her in that role was incredible. I also saw the wonderful absolutely incredible Laura Pick as Alphaba and she was oh my god she blew me away she was so good obviously I knew that she was good as well I'd heard good things about both of these two witches and I heard that they were really good together um and the fact that you know Laura's gone on from being standby Alphaba in in London a couple of years back to playing Alphaba full-time and being you know I think she's been in the show for like three four five years or something crazy like that like since being a standby and then going on to be principal um so that's really incredible to see that kind of progress for her and you know her playing the role full time and she is so good you know she came on stage and I thought she was really funny and like the way that she played Elva was wonderful and um as soon as she started flying during Defying Gravity and she sang those last few notes all of us in the theatre were like oh my god and me and my mum just turned to each other and were like that was incredible and then uh she blew me away with no good deed i literally had goosebumps all up my arms i was just i just thought she was incredible so i was very very happy um seeing this show i think actually we didn't we had everybody playing all the roles that they were supposed to we didn't have any like covers or anything um but just for reference at the time uh, we had alistair brammer as Sierra. he was incredible loved him um we had karina giuseppe actually um she was playing Nether rose and i'm pretty sure when i saw wicked in 2013 it would have been when it was on tour she was also playing her then on the the tour i might be wrong but i recognize that name so that's pretty cool that i saw her again playing Thessa rose and that was so long ago so the fact that she's still in the show playing that role really does say something amazing and also i'm pretty sure she covers glinda as well so like what a woman the stamina that she must have to be playing something like that and you know be a, a cover for one of the witches as well is just you go girl we had kim ismay as uh, madame morrible she was good too um andy hockley as the wonderful wizard of oz he was really good i will just say though um i don't know if i've i think i've mentioned it before in my videos i'm scared of animatronics um sometimes if they are 
too human-like, uh, they scare me, or if I don't know, that's, uh, I, don't, I, I just don't like them. Um, and obviously in Wicked they have the time clock dragon, which I couldn't technically see because the balcony, where I was sat in the stools, the balcony kind of covered the dragon a little bit, so I couldn't see that moving. But that was fine, like, I didn't mind the dragon. Um, but when, when the wizard, the, the head that comes on, where is it? Let me show you a picture of it, if you've not seen Wicked before. Uh, this thing... When that came on stage and started like making noise and moving and everything like genuinely was terrified like I didn't like him at all I couldn't even look at him the second time he came around um so that terrified me um so I'm kind of glad that he was played by human uh the rest of the show because I don't think I would have coped <laughs> if the Wizard of Oz was played, by that, was played by that robot for the rest of the show um we had Nicholas McLean as Bok he was wonderful um all of the box are just so adorable and I thought he was really good too. And then we had Simeon Truby, I think that's how you say his name, as Dr. Dillon and yeah, all really good people and then you know the ensemble, so incredible, all of the dancing that they have to do throughout that show. It's such a high energy show um, and they're in so many different scenes and so many different quick changes so uh, I can't fault the cast enough, they were just incredible. I think I saw uh, their like uh, I think by the time I saw it they had like five shows left so like they were really near the end and they could have really just been like oh I can't I'm not gonna put as much effort into it but they were just absolutely incredible and I really loved it and I always have loved Wicked I think it's such a good show um and I love the whole Wizard of Oz story anyway so seeing it again really made me very happy and obviously seeing it on the West End was pretty awesome too and I really want to go see Lucy Evans playing Elphaba um, I was supposed to see her play Jenna in Waitress uh, in June I think it was of this year and then she obviously announced that she was leaving the show and I was like well what could possibly be so good that you leave the role like Jenna and then she goes and gets cast as Elphaba and I'm like okay fair enough um, so I really want to go see her at some point playing uh, Elphaba because she's oh, she's just one of the most incredible performers of this generation of musical theatre performers and it would be an absolute uh, travesty if I didn't go see her, so we'll definitely be making another trip to London at some point soon to see her playing Elphaba. Enough about Wicked, let's talk about the other show that I went and saw, which was And Juliet. I was so excited about seeing this show. Um, I haven't seen it before, I have listened to the soundtrack. Technically I have watched a bootleg, but shh, don't tell anyone, um, of Grace, who I did end up going and seeing in this uh, show that you will have seen in the clips. Um, and she was incredible. I wanted to go see her just because I've been following her musical theatre career since she's been in Six. I didn't get to see her in Six, um, but I do follow her on like YouTube and Instagram and I just have thought that she was such an amazing performer. And obviously, like I said, I saw that bootleg and she was incredible as Juliet. So I really wanted to see her before she was leaving um, in March with the cast change that's happening. So I said to myself, gotta go see her. And I thought, well, whilst I'm also seeing Sophie Evans before she leaves in the end of January, I may as well go and see Grace before she leaves too and put like kill two birds with one stone there and watch them both um within that same time period so that's why I went then she was doing a matinee performance um so it was quite quiet I think we had like a school group in um because quite a few like school age kid teenagers uh like flooded in like right like the players were on stage like right before the show was about to start like doing the little dance thing that they do um and they were all flooding in then I was thinking okay and then there were still some of them coming in then when they had just started singing larger than life like literally just started singing it so I was like okay uh cutting it a bit fine but it's fine I got upgraded uh we were originally in the uh what do they call it the grand circle this is the little seat change thing that they gave us I don't know if it's because the grand circle wasn't really booked up that much so the people that had booked it um they moved down to the royal circle which is where I got moved to we got moved to row H, seats 27 and 28, which is quite nice. I was originally in like row J, I think it was. Um, so yeah, a bit more forward and then obviously lower down. To be honest, the theatre is quite small anyway and you can see the stage pretty well um, from anywhere that you're sat. So it didn't really matter that much that we got like moved down to a different level. Uh, but it was quite nice to be upgraded. I was pretty pleased with that before the show had even started and then it did start and oh, it's just such a good show. I know it's a jukebox musical and people sometimes are a bit funny about those but 
I don't know, the way that they fitted the story of Romeo and Juliet and modernised it and put these songs that everybody knows and loves so well by Max Martin um, in the show. It was just so good. I loved it so much. Um, I will say um, I had this, which I was expecting anyway, put into my programme, which I was expecting because obviously Grace was playing Juliet instead of Miriam. But then also <laughs> I was a bit like, oh God, uh, we didn't have Oliver playing Shakespeare or Cassidy playing Anne Hathaway. So I was like, great, that's three covers that are on. Um, but honestly, we had um, Kirsty Skivington playing Anne Hathaway and then Ivan de Freitas as Shakespeare. And they were both so good. Honestly, they were incredible. Um, so like, you wouldn't have known either way that they don't usually play that role like full time because they just put all of their, like, they were just, I was blown away by their performance, like, especially Anne Hathaway. Like, she's got some big songs and big moments in that show. Um, so Kirsty did so good playing that. And then obviously Shakespeare leads the show, essentially. And he was so funny. And I know he usually plays um, Lord Capulet in the show. So because of that, the person that usually plays Lord Capulet, I'm pretty sure um, when he isn't there, is um, Christopher Parkinson. But he also wasn't there. Um, quite a few of the ensemble had to like be shuffled around playing different roles uh, because three obviously of the ensemble players were playing main roles instead. So somebody else that I'm pretty sure doesn't usually cover uh, Lord Capulet was there, Billy Nevers. Um, I did notice because I noticed a couple of weeks ago on Twitter, maybe like two weeks ago or something like that. So like a week or so before I watched the show. Um, the person who usually plays Lady Capulet, um, who is a, a member of the players, she said, oh, I'm playing um, a single parent tonight, like Juliet's going to be a single, uh, have a single parent family. Um, and I'm guessing they didn't have anybody to cover Lord Capulet, because I don't know if the person who usually plays him, Ivan, wasn't on stage and neither was his second cover. So I don't know if the person that we saw even covers the role of Lord Capulet. So I think he had to like learn the, the role I guess because I'm pretty sure I've never seen him play him so um that was a lot of shuffling around of the cast um but honestly you wouldn't have been able to tell like the dance captains and the swings and everything that work so tirelessly tirelessly through the show to like make everything seem like it's supposed to be like that and that nothing's wrong and there's people missing and I, I really loved the show and I thought everybody was just out of this world let me talk about Grace for a second um I just love her so much in this role and I'm really sad that she is leaving because I would like to go see her again in this show but I just she was so funny um and her vocals were absolutely incredible I already knew they were because obviously she covered all six of the queens in six at one point and she was really good in those so I knew that we were in for a treat watching her and I came out of it and we were talking about it with my mum I knew that she would enjoy the show but I wasn't sure how much she would enjoy it but she absolutely adored it um and she said oh I'd go again and she said to me um because we were looking through the program after the show um when we went back to our hotel room she said I don't think I can picture um Miriam <laughs> playing Juliet which isn't uh, isn't like an offense to Miriam obviously she was cast for a reason um but like I wanted to see Grace because I knew that she was leaving soon and she was such a good like Juliet in, in and she was really good in the show but like yeah I don't know it's weird I she's not usually the one that plays the, the role but my mum was like yeah I don't think I could picture anybody else playing her now which is funny because like she doesn't usually play her um full time so I don't know my mum obviously was very impressed with her too um so that was always nice that when you know somebody that you're not sure how they will react to a certain person or a certain show really ends up enjoying it so um I know that that's something we'll hopefully go and see at some point in the future when we'd ask each other like what our favorite was that we saw of the sh two shows that we did see obviously Wicked will always have a very special place in my heart I adore Wicked um but we both said that Anne Juliet was our favorite that we saw during this trip so that was pretty cool. Um, we've got to see a new show with different people that we've not seen before before. We had obviously Alex Thomas Smith playing May, who was absolutely incredible. I thought that they were just phenomenal, like their vocals were incredible and they brought such a nice like sweetness to the character. Um, obviously like I said I've never seen the show before but obviously seeing the previous person who played May's performance 
and seeing Alex's performance I just thought that they did that character so much justice um and I thought that Alex was just I don't know I loved I loved their take on me we had obviously the absolutely incredible David Bedella 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 how do you say his name Bedella playing um Lance Jordan Luke Gage as Romeo uh, we had Melanie Labarry as nurse and then Francois uh played by Tim and they were all incredible too. Um, Jordan Luke Gage was so funny. I still can't believe like at some point last year he was playing JD in Heathers because it's such a vast difference. But like, oh, he was so funny, so incredible. His vocals, I knew were gonna be incredible anyway, but I don't know, I wasn't expecting Romeo to be like that, but like he played Romeo in such a funny way. Um, I thought that Tim was really good as Francois as well. David and Melanie as nurse and as lance were just uh, the such an iconic duo um and i just thought both of them were just hilarious like so funny like their comedic timing and like the physicality of the way that they performed their roles and sung certain lines or said certain things and like their chemistry was just off the charts i just thought they were so so good um and i'm glad i got to see them before Mel melanie leaves i don't know is David leaving? I don't think he is. I think quite a few of them are staying when they do have a cast change in March. Uh, but I think I would like to see it at some point um, once Kiala from The Greatest Showman takes over the role of nurse because when I was watching the show knowing then that she was taking over the role of the nurse I could really hear her singing the songs and like playing the part but I know Melanie and David were just oh I was so happy to have seen them because they are such icons of the show and I just thought that they were just incredible. I just, oh such a good show. I, I could talk all day about Anne Julia. I just thought it was so so good and can't get the songs out of my head which always happens after I've seen a show and I was really happy that my mum also loved the show just as much as I did because I was hoping she would. I knew she would enjoy the music in it but I wasn't sure how she would fare with a more like very modern day <laughs> take on Romeo and Juliet but she loved it and she thought everybody was really like she loved um nurse and she loved lance uh and she thought grace was incredible i think at some point in the future uh once the cast change has happened i would like to see it and see how kiala does in the role of nurse um and how she settles into being in her first west end show um but yeah i love this show it was so so good so if you haven't seen Anne Juliet, please go watch it or at least listen to the soundtrack because it was just so good so yeah that is all I have to say about those shows, I could probably run and rumble about <laughs> musical theatre for such a long time because uh, I just adore musical theatre and every time I come and see a show after I've left the theatre I'm always like why did I not take up a career in musical theatre like honestly? <laughs> um, but yeah if you liked this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more from me don't forget to subscribe to my channel and yeah other than that I will see you next time in another video. Good. Bye to you.